welcome back. We've been talking about presidential politics all day on Marker Call today. A lot of Democrats in the field, and of course, the big question is who rose to the challenge in the Democratic debate yesterday? We try to answer that in our tough call. Joining us is Kevin Baker, contributing editor at American Heritage Magazine, and Jonathan Chait, senior editor of the New Republic here as well. Gentlemen, it's good to have you here. Thanks for having us. Kevin, let's start with you here. Just your sort of sure. initial gut reaction. It's such a big field, so there's a lot of right. candidates yeah. out there to take a look at. Who fared best? I think it was a good night for Howard Dean. I, I think he spoke, his, seemed to speak his mind. He seemed very open. Um, and he was at ease with his anger. You know, if, if Al Smith and uh, Hubert Humphrey were the happy warriors of the Democratic <laughs> Party, maybe uh, Dean is the angry warrior. And I think he seemed very easy in that role, and I think he was playing into a lot of the anger that uh, the Democrats have. I thought it was also a good night for Wesley Clark mm -hmm. in that it, it clearly showed the other candidates did not know how to attack him. He was able to kind of get by, being a little self-deprecatory, uh, being kind of funny at times. I think he, he played well. Jonathan, who do you think looked best? I thought Clark had the most to gain, and he did gain the most in that debate. The questions were, did he have a grasp of domestic policy going into the debate? And pretty clearly, he did. He was very much at ease answering questions on a fairly wide range of domestic policy questions. Was there anyone, Kevin, in particular, that you thought really sort of just dropped the ball here and didn't get a message out that they should have? I think it was another bad night for John Kerry. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he, you know, he accused uh, Dean very early on of being wrong on his facts, but he repeatedly got confused. He talked about wanting to cut the deficit in half the way Clinton did. Uh, Clinton obliterated the deficit. He talked about how we could, if we were going to trade only with countries that had our environmental and labor standards, we would trade with nobody. You know, hey, Senator, how about Europe? How about Canada? How about Japan? Um, they were, he carried water for the Republicans, saying how uh, Democrats can't love jobs but hate the people who create it. He had a kind of bizarre health care proposal about taking catastrophic illness out of the plan, whatever that means. I, I thought he had a real chance to cast himself as a hybrid of a war hero and a populist mm -hmm. of Clark and Dean, and he failed to do it. Jonathan, on that same question, your call. Actually, I thought Howard Dean was pummeled pretty hard uh, last night. Gephardt went after him, and then when it appeared that Kerry was going to be in a position of being the peacemaker, Kerry stuck the knife in, too. And uh, Dean seemed visibly angry. I actually disagree. He, he uh, sort of curled his lip like, uh, like that when he was attacked. It was almost a kind of a comical moment of, of him sort of reacting against this betrayal by his colleagues all ganging up against him. Um, so I don't think he came off particularly well. Was there anything that, Kevin, in your opinion, clearly distinguished one candidate from the other on this economic plan? You know, what would resonate to voters and viewers if they saw those candidates standing there? Well, it was interesting to me how, um, how protectionism and globalization is emerging as a whole issue. This is something nobody really anticipated becoming a big issue. And it was amazing to me how many candidates were talking about really kind of radical changes in things like the WTO, mm -hmm. in NAFTA. Um, you know, Kerry resisted that. The other were really calling for rewriting basic trade agreements, which is going to be probably harder than they let on and probably more of a seismic change than they were letting on. But I think it is a real issue. This jobs really are fleeing, and this is um, uh, going to resonate with a lot of Americans. Which message will resonate the loudest, Jonathan? Well, taxes seems to be the issue that they're most united on. And it's not that the candidates are in complete agreement philosophically. I think it's that the Bush administration is so far to the right and so unbudging in its tax policies that it, it's very easy for the Democrats to, to carve a fairly moderate sounding position that unites them and still puts them in pretty stark contrast with President Bush. I guess that's the other question here, Kevin. Will we have now uh, one or two candidates emerge even more from this particular debate that will look like a serious contender against President Bush, who's seen some approval ratings drop? Yeah, uh, I mean, I thought like one person who, f who kind of failed to emerge was John Edwards, mm -hmm. but he had a very good way of putting the tax issue, talking about how B Bush's taxes are trying to transfer the tax burden from unearned income to uh, to workers. Uh, and I thought he put that well. If he keeps that up, I think he could emerge. I thought uh, Joe Lieberman staked out a nice position between Bush and kind of the liberal wing of the party for himself um, on a number of issues, okay, both so international and domestic. Okay, so you didn't mention Wesley Clark there or Howard Dean. I, I think Wesley Clark is still the, the tabula rasa. I think he, you know, he had a nice night last night, but he's going to have to eventually come forward with more specific ideas. Um, Howard Dean, I think, further cemented his support on kind of the vaguely liberal, liberal left uh, wing of the party. 
Jonathan, who emerges as far as the top contender for President Bush, if we can even say that yet? Look, I have to disagree about uh, Wesley Clark. I think his domestic policy positions are becoming ever clearer. He gave a major speech two days ago in which he outlined his jobs program, and it's pretty clear from that that he is a Clintonite on domestic policy questions. He's become ensconced by the Clinton domestic policy-making apparatus. Uh, he said he's pro-free uh, pro trade, uh, he's against uh, the, the, top, the top parts of the Bush tax cuts, and if you look at the people he surrounded himself with, it's pretty clear what direction he's going in. Kevin, are we getting more direction at all from the Democrats compared to what we got last election, presidential election, and even the midterm election? There was a, a lot being made that the Democrats weren't getting a message out, and they did not seem to have a coherent plan to counter the Republicans. Yeah, I, I thought in, in general, what came through as a, as a party, there was a big um, agreement on the need to cut the deficit, the need to transfer the tax burden back to the wealthier, uh, the need to look out for American workers through globalization. Um, you know, there were there were a couple, you know, gaffes out here and there. I mean, Clark had one where he talked about we need to uh, guarantee any American, every American, the right to own a home. Um, that, that's a, a radical and expensive new policy if he means it, which I don't think he did. Jonathan, same question for you there. Does the Democratic Party have a coherent message yet? Well, look, they're going to come after President Clinton on the economy and jobs, and, and mainly, President I think... President Bush, I think you mean there. Right. Oh, right, President Bush, not President Clinton, <laughs> that's right. President Clinton, it's a whole new party. <laughs> that's then. right, they're absolutely, <laughs> they're very much embracing <laughs> President Clinton. Uh, I've, got, I've got to get with the program here. They're going after <laughs> President Bush, it's been three years now. Um, and, and in his priorities, look, President Bush's priorities are tax cuts, and especially tax cuts for people in top brackets. And, and look, if you're going to give most of the budget surplus to one or two percent of the population, it's pretty easy for the other party to come out and say, well, look, we're going to give the money instead to the other 98 percent. And they think that's a winning platform. And uh, I think if they can get past foreign policy, I think they can probably win on that platform. Interesting. Although, I don't think they can get past foreign policy, but, you know, why, if they why can. Why do you say that? What about Wesley Clark? Can he help them get past? He's the one who could probably do it. Uh, of course, this giant gulf has emerged between the two parties, especially after September 11th on who do you trust. And Bush still has very high ratings on dealing with terrorism. And still, this, the, the sense persists that he's a leader who's been very strong in the wake of the September 11th attacks. Clark is probably the best bet to, to overcome that perception, but, but it's going to be uphill for almost all the other Democrats candidates in overcoming that perception in moving the election onto their onto their friendly terrain. Isn't that uh, historically often the problem for the Democratic Party, though? Um, yes, although, oddly enough, Democrats have often been the party that's led the United States into war, that's been the international party, uh, but nonetheless, Republicans have been very good at uh, bringing up the idea that somehow they're less good at protecting the country. I thought Lieberman had an interesting uh, take on that when he accused Bush of going to the U.N. like a beggar. Uh, it was an interesting attack on him uh, from sort of the right, um, you know, an attempt to get Americans who don't want to see this president there groveling for money. Um, I thought that was a, an interesting moment. I got five seconds. Hillary or no? Uh, she won't run this year. Jonathan, right. same question. No, no, Hillary. No, We're no, done with no, these she won't. candidates here. This is a this is a right wing fevered imagination. They they want it so badly to happen that they're imagining <laughs> that it's true, but it's not going to happen. All right, Jonathan Jake, Kevin Baker, great talking with you about presidential politics, and that wraps it up for Market Call today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.